ಪರಂಪರ್ಯ ವಿಮಹೆ ಜ್ಞಾಣಲಿಂಗೇಶ್ವರಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ಗುರು ಪ್ರಚೋದಯತೆ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಯೋಗ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗೀತಾನಂದ ಗಿರಿ ಗುರು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜೈ ಓಂ ಪುದುವೈ ಕಲೈ ಮಾಮಣಿ ಪುದುವೈ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗಚಾರಣಿ ಅಮ್ಮ ಜೀಂ ಮೀನಾಕ್ಷಿ ದೇವಿ ಭವಣಿ ಗುರು ಮಾತಾ ಕಿ ಜೈ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ವಣಕ್ಕಂ ವಂದನ ಸುಪ್ರಭಾತ್ ಶುಭ ದಿನ ಬೋನ್ಶೋರ್ ಬೋನ್ಶೋರ್ನೋ ಬೋನಸೇರ ಬೋನೋನೋತೆ ಹುಯ್ಯ ಮೋರೆ ಬೋರೇಡ ಕಿಯೋ ಓರ ಸಲಮತ್ ಪಗಿ ಆಯು ಭೋವಾನ್ ಆಯುಷ್ಮಾನ್ ಭವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಲೋಮ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಆನ್ ಅ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ವೀಕ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡೆ ಗುಡ್ ನಂಬರ್ and for those in this part of the world scintillating saturdays and for those in other parts especially in north america some people call it fabulous fridays because it's friday evening for some of you in north america this week we wanted to look at the power of a focused mind you know when you think about yoga especially from the perspective of maharishi patanjali i really don't think we need any other perspective perspective of maharishi patanjali is more than enough for many many lifetimes but from the perspective of maharishi patanjali yoga is all about the mind understanding the mind exploring the mind realizing the power of the mind and then transcending the mind what a beautiful way to approach this great gift of being human the power that comes with the mind now you know normally when we look at the world around us we are able to see things that are there you can see me i can see you i can see the beautiful sky you can see those beautiful yellow flowers that are in bloom here this whole tree is filled with yellow flowers and the whole f- floor around here is filled with these beautiful flowers you can see them <laughs> we can see all of this <clears throat> why can we see it because the light the light reflects off the object and that light which is reflected off the object comes into contact with our eyes i mean you know the light reflecting off the object comes into contact with our eyes and hence we see normal physics so that which enables us to see is the light and what type of light is it it's basically scattered light so light that is scattered helps you to see so we can see things and based on that we can do what we need to do so wonderful scattered light is useful great but then that's where the power of the light stops because it is only a vehicle for you to see it is not able to do anything on its own so because the light is scattered we can see but the light itself is just enabling us to see that's all when it is scattered now you take that same light 
same light and you start to focus it you bring that light which is scattered into a one pointed focused beam and suddenly that light as a laser beam starts to have a power of its own so whereas scattered light only enabled us to use it it was not doing anything other than enabling us to see when it gets focused it takes on a new dimension it takes on a dimension that can penetrate tissues scattered light cannot penetrate it's only on the surface but focused light as a laser beam can start to penetrate tissues of course either for taking a life or saving a life a laser beam in the hands of a maniac can take a life a laser beam in the hands of a trained surgeon can save a life the power of a focused beam of light laser now if we understand our mind in the similar way when the mind is scattered it sort of just enables you to stutter through the stage of life falling down like i did <laughs> the other day you see this <laughs> reminding myself that i'm not so intelligent after all that i do stupid things like fall down the stairs our mind when it is scattered has some uses but those uses are limited to the applications of the power of that scattered mind and it is very minimal the moment you start to focus the mind it takes on a new dimension it takes on a new power and suddenly it becomes a tool to penetrate the layers of consciousness just like a focused beam of light the laser can penetrate the tissues so if you want to penetrate the different layers of consciousness at least a minimum of 7 tasya saptada pranta bhumi prajna says maharishi patanjali at least 7 of which the anta bhumi the penultimate one is prajna tasya saptada pranta bhumi prajna so when you want to penetrate through these layers and you want to get to the innermost the deepest levels of our consciousness itself where we start to realize who we truly are you need a focused mind and this is why if you look at the structure of ashtanga yoga of maharishi patanjali yama niyama asana प्राणायाम प्रत्याहार धारणा ध्यान समादय अष्ट अंगा दोस एट लिम्स यम नियम आसन प्राणायाम प्रत्याहार धारण ध्यान समादय अष्ट अंगा द एट लिम्स आर दीज यू विल रियलाइज दैट द होल पर्पज ऑफ द इनिशियल लिम्स विच आर कॉल द बहिरंगा are to prepare us for the antaranga sadhana to go deeper within and go into that internal deeper higher level of our own self effort purushartha and those layers truly open up when we start to work on dharana dhyana samadhi and these three trayam ekatva samyamah these three dharana dhyana samadhi together become a new wholesome entity called samyama 
this samyama process is a process of being able to bring the mind that was all fo- all scattered all pointed into a one pointed mind so enabling us to bring that scattered mind which was everywhere at the same time bringing it to being here at this time that moment of the scattered to the one pointed this is a very important transformational process when we want to start moving into the internal aspects of yoga the antaranga sadhana which are very very important even the hatha pradapika of swatmarama suri tells us the whole purpose of hatha yoga is for raja yoga and to attain raja yoga you need the hatha yoga so it's not that oh i'll just do my hatha yoga uh, and get a yoga but <laughs> or whatever you want to get go but yourself seriously you know the whole purpose of the external is to lead us into the internal and that is why this process of enabling the mind to focus because the more focused it becomes the more powerful it becomes just like the focus light of a laser beam becomes more powerful and this is why when we look at the beautiful science of yoga what we realize is that there are different layers and different levels it is said the chitta the mind and all its components have different states of being different planes of existence so a plane plane of existence is called a bhumi like we are on this plane of existence earth so it's called bhumi earth bhumi bhu hmm? going around and going bhu 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 <laughs> to scare people yeah we are scared really scared on this planet we should be <coughs> should be scared of what we have done to it and what we are doing to it and <laughs> what we are becoming any anyway, seriously bhumi so chitta bhumi yes nevo <laughs> chitta bhumi are the different planes of the mind itself so the mind has multiple planes of existence and these are said to be five now these are found in the commentaries on the yoga sutra this is not found in the yoga sutra itself and again the internet is a great source of information but a greater source of misinformation and you find people writing anything they want just because they can just because they can they write anything they want and so you find people saying the chitta bhumi is in the yoga sutras like you also find people saying there are four asanas described by maharishi patanjali i am like seriously <laughs> patanjali will come and punch you in the nose for misquoting him huh? they write anything they want and then people quote that and then they write even more nonsense it's like you know there's a research paper on slow paced bastrika i'm like bastrika means a rapid bellows breath how can you do slow paced at 6 breaths per minute now 6 breaths per minute is deep breathing okay it's it's not bastrika eh hey, call it anything you want it now everybody quotes it you know you quote nonsense and nonsense and nonsense after nonsense and then you pile on more and more nonsense and as my beloved madan mohan sir used to say he says you know after you know you have talked for about half an hour he'll say that was beautiful nonsense <laughs> beautiful nonsense <laughs> madan mohan sir oh my god he has that amazing way of really really puncturing your yeah inflated self esteem ego <laughs> Uh, after you've done, he says that was really wonderful, beautiful nonsense. <laughs> we have to be very careful. We are building on that. So these concepts are found in the later translate uh, commentaries. The commentators have expanded to help us understand stuff. Commentators have tried to expand it. So the chitta bhumi, 
the chitta bhumi refers to these planes where our mind normally settles earth is where we settle so the settling down you know if you put mud in water after some time the mud settles down where do you settle where does your mind settle what is the state of your mind in its process of settling down in india every parent wants the child to get married get a job and settle down for life settle down for life <laughs> settle down settling down bhumi hmm? so this chitta bhumi there is one which is called mooda mooda means basically the dullest possible mud mooda mud hmm? in tamil we say mundam which means basically your consciousness is at the level of clay mud muddy consciousness mundam mooda muddy mud this mooda is the dullest possible level of consciousness we are so dull light cannot pass through you Yeah, so dull. The light is not passing through you. You are, you know, we talk about opaque, transparent, translucent, and opaque. Speaking of light in the mind, this is that opaque lead shield. Consciousness just cannot pass through it. It is so dull and inert. Tamasi ka guna at its peak. Mooda. We then have another plane of the mind. which is kshipta kshipta is that mind which is everywhere everywhere all the time and nowhere no time it's, it's just so scattered you remember i talked about scattered light kshipta is that mind that is so scattered everywhere now some people put mooda at the bottom some people put kshipta and then mooda i prefer mooda at the bottom because you know you are moving from that opaque to a translucent to a transparent you know that that type of movement you start with opaque so for me mooda at the bottom really makes more sense though often you find kshipta and then mooda mentioned in indian traditions there are multiple perspectives so Don't, don't don't get locked in is it this or that understand there are multiple perspectives okay fine for my son i am a father for my wife i am a husband for my mother i am a son but i am all me only okay so if you say no 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 you are only a father no i am a father i am a brother i am a sister i am a mother i am a human being i am a dog and i am everything okay it depends on the other person's perspective so do not do not get stuck in this mooda that opaque doesn't allow the light of consciousness to pass at all sticky stuck mud kshipta is everywhere at the every time you know every time everywhere so it's not doing anything is these people who are too busy doing nothing there are some people who are amazing they they are just seem so busy and they actually doing nothing vikship that's why shipta is like that so this is the normal state of us human beings on this planet mooda and shipta this is actually where we are now when you start to come into the life of yoga when yoga sadhana becomes your life your yoga jeevana at that state you start to try to move out of mooda and shipta and you start to develop a mind that is a little less scattered that is called vikshipta v is a superlative so vikshipta is where you are having a mind that is less scattered shipta was very scattered it was totally scattered you are trying to bring that scattered mind you know out of the range you are trying to bring it into the range Okay, imagine the mind which you couldn't even see because it's so scattered. You are bringing it into the range where you can see it a bit more. You can perceive it. You can work with it. So the moment you come into yoga sadhana and you start to say, "Okay, I'm going to sit still. 
I'm going to focus on my breath. I'm going to focus on the asana I'm doing. You are starting to support your mind to move into that chitta bhumi which is vikshipta. But that's not enough because that is where you are beginning the yoga sadhana. You are starting to channelize that mind. So then what happens? You start to want it to work towards a one-pointed state. Eka gata. So you want to move from Muda and Kshipta. You want to come into Vikshipta and then you want to move into Eka Gata. Eka Gata is that point where the all-pointed mind has become one-pointed. And there are three Parinamas, three transformations that Maharishi Patanjali talks about. And all of this is in the Vibhuti Pada. And most people I find they stop at the Sadhana Pada and the Samadhi Pada. These two they stop. Very few people touch the Vibhuti Pada. They think, ah, it's all these Siddhis which have nothing to do with reality. It's all that nonsense about Siddhis. No, 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 no. It's about all the sensible stuff to understand the mind and the power of a focused mind. You want to understand the power of a focused mind, go into the Vibhuti Pada. That is where you find it. So there are some beautiful verses. You know, the, the whole of Vibhuti Pada starts off with the concept of Dharana Dhyana Samadhi. I told you the Antaranga, that Samyama and Trayamaiketra Samyama, that whole process of how your mind has to be bound to one place at one time. Desha Bandha Chittasya Dharana. Then that has to become continuous. Tattva Pratya Ekatanata Dhyanam. It has to become Ekatanata. It has to become. And then Swarupa Shunya Miva Samadhihi. That what happens is everything falls away and you come into that state of being totally absorbed. This process of Dharana Dhyana Samadhi coming together to give us that experience of Samyama. Samyama is the wholesome experience of the combined nature of Dharana Dhyana Samadhi. It's not just Dharana plus Dhyana plus Samadhi. It is, it is the whole experience. It's, it's like, you know, Dharana Dhyana Samadhi are the ingredients. So you put the ingredients and then you have the meal. The meal is Samyama. So don't think that, it's like, you know, if I say I'm going to give you curd rice and I give you, you know, unboiled rice and curd and salt and pickle and I put them all separate. You say, this is not curd rice. I say, yeah, it is. You add them all together, you have curd rice. No, curd rice is when you have put them all together, you have cooked it and you have the wholesome final result that you can experience. That is Samyama. And that is why in this process of Samyama, we start to actually develop this focused mind. The focused mind, which is all-powerful, is developed when that Samyama starts to occur. So that Samyama, Maharishi Patanjali says, when you are able to work on Samyama, power of focused mind, the rest of the whole Vibhuti Pada is do Samyama on this, do Samyama. Tasya Bhumishi, Bhumishu Viniyogaha. Okay. You do the Samyama on different things and you create different things. It's, you choose the different ingredients. You choose the ingredients for curd rice, you get curd rice. Choose the ingredients for a nice pasta, you get pasta. You know, what you choose the ingredients, you cook it and you experience it. Okay. But the, the key part is the focused mind. The key part is the Samyama. The key part is where Dharana Dhyana Samadhi become one. And that is why he says, when you start to manifest this, when you gain this capacity of Samyama, Tajjayat. Tajjayat Pragna Lokaha. When you have mastered the process of Samyama, you will Get through those seven layers. Remember, Tasya Saptada Prantabhumil Pragya, as says Maharishi Patanjali. Saptada, that seven layers of consciousness of which the penultimate one is Anta, is Pragya. That Pragya Loka, that layer of consciousness where you are in tune with the cosmic Wisdom itself. Pragya is the cosmic wisdom itself. So, Tajjayat, 
Vajnaloka. That focused mind of yours which has gone into Samyama, wherever you choose to point it, Wherever you choose to point it, what has happened? You have gone into that transcendental wisdom of the universe itself. That Akashic Rai, that Akashic record, you are starting to tap into it. You don't have to read a book. You don't have to go and search in Google and Wikipedia. You don't have to read Dr. Ananda's books and his papers and his watch his videos. You get their wisdom from the source. You are not anymore buying bottled water. You are getting the water from the source, the stream itself. <laughs> you are getting to that stream. Most of the people, they are having bottled knowledge. You want to get to the source, okay? I tell you, it's beautiful. Get to the source. Drink from the source. And that is why the Samyama process is where we start to move into that state of Prajna Loka. Now to move into that state, you remember we were in Muda Kshipta? We, we have started to move into Vikshipta and starting to try to go into Ekagrata. Of course, the final one is Niruddha. You have to go beyond it because remember what is the whole process of yoga all about? Yoga, chitta, vritti, nirodha. That is the whole process. So, muda to kshipta to vikshipta to ekagrata. But finally, don't forget, niruddha is your goal. That is where you want to go to that state where a state of no mind. So you are utilizing the mind, you are exploring the mind, you are relating to the mind, but then ultimately the goal is transcending the mind. Because the mind is also a tool. Mind is also a tool ultimately. If you want to climb someplace and you use a ladder, find the best ladder, make sure it's stable, make sure it is capable of getting you where you need to go. But then at the final stage you have to get off the ladder. You don't stay on that ladder forever. If you want to go from one side of the river to the other, make the best boat. Travel in that boat, but remember you have to get off on the other side, not stay in that boat for the rest of your life. This is where going through transformation and transcendence is what yoga is all about. At all levels, transformation and transcendence. So, Muda, Kshipta, Vikshipta, Ekagrata and Niruddha. So, Niruddha is that state where you have empowered the mind so much that now you have done what you need to do and the tool can be placed back in the toolkit. I hope you don't carry a hammer every place where you go. Well, if you are poor, you can do it, but it's okay. He can carry his hammer wherever he wants. Hmm? One of the superhero Avengers. Yeah, okay, he can carry. You don't, you know, you, when, when you need to use a hammer to nail something in your house, you nail it and put the hammer back where it should be. Don't carry that hammer to bed with you. Don't ca carry that hammer to work with you. Hmm? As someone said, if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. We have to be very careful with that approach. Many people have that approach. And this is why though I love yoga, though yoga is my divine mother, I know that there is a place for yoga and there is a place for other things also. This this whole idea that we will solve everything. I think we need to understand. The more we understand our limitations, the more we grow in our strength. If we don't understand our limitations, we'll always be weak. Coming back, this process is moving towards Niruddha. And this is why, again, in the Vibhuti Pada, there are three beautiful verses that Maharishi Patanjali talks about. The concept of Parinama. Parinama is the transformative growth. 
Parinama is transformative growth. Sometimes we call it evolution also. Though in yoga it is more of involution. Remember, we want to go back to the source. So, in the Vibhuti Pada, he talks about three Parinamas. Nirodha Parinama, Ekagrata Parinama and Samadhi Parinama. So, the Parinama, the transformative process that enables us to move towards Nirodha, the process that enables us to move towards Samadhi and the process that enables us to move towards Ekagrata. What beautiful tools he gives. The, the Patanjali Yoga Sutras are a beautiful manual that enable us to go through the whole process of transformation and transcendence. He says in the ninth verse of the Vibhuti Pada, Bhyuttana niroda samskara yo abhibhava pradur bhavav niroda kshana chittanvayo niroda parinamaha What this means is that we want to move towards a controlled state. That state of niruddha. Okay? For that, transformation towards that controlled state. It occurs, when does it occur? In the moment, in the moment that exists between the rising and the falling of the conditioned responses. So we have conditioned responses. We have to understand our samskara. Samskaras are our conditioned responses. And the samskaras and vasanas are entwined in creating karma through the medium of the kleshas. So, we have to look at our samskaric pattern, our conditioned responses. We have to find when they are rising and when they are falling. And in that moment between that, that is where you have to move. You have to go through that point between the rising and the falling of the conditioned responses. Vyuttana nirodha samskarayo abhibhava pradur bhavav. Pradur bhava, the rising and the falling. Nirodakshana, there is a kshana, there is a moment. Chittanvayo, that is where you need to go through that moment. So for this you have to first of all realize you have samskara. You have to realize you are a conditioned being. You have to find those patterns of conditioning and be aware of when they are rising and falling and then make the choice to go through that gap between the rising and the falling of that samskaric patterns and then you move into that state of Niruddha. He says, this is not easy. So in the very next sutra he tells us, Tasya Prashanta Vahita Samskarat So this is not going to just happen. I tried it once and it didn't happen. No, no, no. You have to keep on doing it. There has to be repeated efforts for that Nirodha Parinama to occur and to come into that state of Niruddha. So there has to be a constant effort of self-observation. Self-observation, self-reflection and self-effort. And this has to constantly be occurring. For that Nirodha Parinama. He then says, when you want to move into Samadhi, remember Dharana Dhyana Samadhi? When you move into Samadhi for that, similarly, Sarvarta Yeka Ghrata Yo Shayoda Yo Chittasya Samadhi Parinamaha. So similarly for Samadhi Parinama, the transformation into Samadhi, there is the mind that is Sarvarta. Remember I told you the scattered mind that is everywhere but nowhere. You know that everywhere but nowhere that Sarvarta has to become Ekagratayo. And so there is a point where the all-pointedness gives way to one-pointedness. Sarvarta Ekagratayo Shayodayo Chittasya Samadhi Parinama. And this is where, this is a transformation from the Kshipta to the Vikshipta to the Ekagrata state. This is how the transformation is happening when we do this. And he says, similarly, 
the appearance and disappearance will be the kshayodayo. As Nidhu was saying, like the Amavasa and Purnima, the no moon and the new moon. You know those phases of the moon? You have to know where it is. You have to be alert. You have to be aware. And you have to then make that choice to go through that opportunity. There is a window of opportunity. A window of transformation that is becoming, beckoning us. We have to move through that. And he says, Tatapuna Shanto Udita. So Shanta is when it is tranquil. Udita is when it is manifesting. Tulya Pratyayo Chittasya Ekagrata Parinama. So similarly that there will be, you will be having an all-pointed mind and then it will become one-pointed and then before you know it, it will again become all-pointed because the mind is like an animal. It wants to run around. It wants to have fun. It wants to jump around. It wants to go and taste of everything. And so you have to keep on catching it and bringing it back to its place. You have to bring it back to where you want to tie it. Remember, Desha Bandha Chittasya Dharana. You want to tie it to that one point. Bind it to that one point. So it keeps on running away. You bring it back and tie it. Sounds a big, a bit like the story of Vikram and Betal. And he had to keep on going and bringing that Betal back because it kept on at the end of the story running away, flying away rather. You know, you have to keep on finding it and bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back. And then finally it starts to become that one-pointed mind. It just doesn't happen like that. What beautiful teachings. These verses here in the Vibhuti Pada, when he talks about these verses, it's just so beautiful. When he says, Bhyuttana nirodha samskarayo abhibhava pradur bhavo nirodha kshana chittan vayo nirodha parinamaha tasya prashanta vahita samskarat sarvarta ekagratayo shayodayo chittasya samadhi parinamaha tadapuna shanto ditao Tulya Pratyayo Chittasya Ekagrata Parinamaha Beautiful teachings that tell us that if you want to harness the power of that focused mind, you have to be aware of the Chitta Bhumi. Mood, Akshipta, Vikshipta, Ekagrata and that you need to move into that Niruddha, Chitta Vritti Nirodaha. What a beautiful Reminder for us. What a beautiful reminder that we need to move towards that process. And we have to understand that our samskaric patterns, the conditioned responses are going to be creating the turmoil. And you find where those patterns are coming. Where is the rising and the falling of those patterns? Where do they appear and where do they disappear? Find that gap and move through that gap. And bringing that all-pointed, scattered mind to a focus. And that is why, as we bring it to the focus, we realize that it keeps on running away. And we have to keep on catching it and bringing it back. We have to catch it and bring it back. That constant effort, it is not a one-time effort. It's a constant, repeated effort. That is why, when Maharishi Patanjali defines Abhyasa, Satu Dhirga Kala, it has to be over a long period of time. Nairantarya, without interruption. And for the purpose of the higher, Satkara, remember always, Yoga for the sake of Yoga. Not because of the peanuts you will get with it. Not because of the popcorn. Hmm? We have got lost. We have got lost because we want to do yoga for the so-called benefits we'll get, which are the peanut, popcorn and ice candy. Yoga for the sake of yoga. Satkara. And it should be based on a Dridabhumi. Satu dhirga kala nairantarya satkara asebito dhridabhumihi That is where Abhyasa comes in. Repeated self-effort, repeated self-effort with the highest, highest aspirations. And what happens is we start to harness this power of the focused mind. And this focused mind, when you start to apply it, 
Tasya Bhumishu Viniyoga. All these amazing siddhis that he talks about in the Vibhuti Pada. What beautiful siddhis he talks about. And every one of those siddhis is the logical culmination. culmination. The logical culmination, the natural culmination of applying a focused mind on different aspects of our life. That's for another week and we'll continue it. Next week being my birthday, we'll have a morning fire ceremony happening here. So I may have to reschedule my Saturday. I don't want to miss a Saturday. So I may, after the fire ceremony is done and all, I may do my scintillating Saturdays a bit later. Uh, we don't want to miss any week, do we? <laughs> so we will do it after the Homa is completed uh, at some point on Saturday. So it will be done on Saturday, but it may not be the same time because during this time we'll be down in the Satsanga Hall doing the actual uh, Homa itself. Thank you so much for being with me and giving me the opportunity to explore these concepts. When we have an opportunity to explore them, we start to think about them, we start to focus on them, we start to think about them, focus, talk about them, share them, practice them. They come alive. Because all of these teachings, all of these teachings, they are meant to be part of our every moment life. Yoga is a living tradition. It's a lived system. It's not something to just study. It's not something to get a degree in. That's all nice. What is more important is to live these teachings. It's a lived experience. May you all be blessed and may you be a blessing wherever you are. Have a wonderful day or night, depending on which part of the planet you are in. Hari Om Tat Sat.